What's going on guys? So for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, there are a few changes here. I have been updating my office. The main attraction is actually off camera there. I will show you my new desk setup. In fact, a full office tour coming up real soon. So that will be really cool. But with that new desk setup, I have a brand new PC that I am putting together. Actually, I've kind of put it together right here, but I want to go over with you all of the specs that I use and everything to put this together because we have some brand new graphics cards from Nvidia, brand new processors from Intel, and so this is really the best time to put together a new computer. So that's it. Let's take a look at a brand new PC specifically for photo and video editing. So I've got to give a big shout out to B&H for sponsoring this video. Also, everything here came from B&H and I really like them for computer hardware because they are a first party seller so you don't have to worry about getting something from a third party. All of the warranties from all of these components are going to be good and honored and they're just an awesome website and they support creators so much. So. I really appreciate you guys supporting them. Check out the links below for all of this stuff, but huge shout out to them for sponsoring this video and for being a part of this channel so much. So we are looking mainly at the best components for a video and photo editing computer, so keep that in mind. Now if you're looking for like a comprehensive build guide, uh, check out my buddy Max. I'll leave a link to his video where he goes through all of that. He's amazing with that kind of stuff. So we're going to be looking most of this from a component. I do have some shots of all the build and put it together, but if you're looking for something detailed, check out his channel on that. He's an awesome guy too. Alright, so first I will take the bait and answer the question PC or Mac, especially since we do have brand new iMacs that just came out like a week or two ago. So the 2019 iMacs are here. Why would I go ahead and build a custom PC instead of that? And the main reason for that is when you're doing a custom PC, you can really load this thing with so much hardware to really bring uh, up a lot of the value towards a custom PC. Uh, I do find that Adobe software runs a little bit better on my Apple computers. And so for laptops, I kind of tend to go with an with a MacBook Pro on those but for PCs I mean you can just deck this thing out and the main reason is storage you need a lot of storage if you're going to do a PC for or any kind of computer for video and photo editing and the ability to put in some crazy one terabyte and two terabyte SSDs for like two three hundred bucks I mean honestly the upgrade prices for a iMac to go to storage of two terabytes is like eight hundred dollars it's ridiculous so a system like this compared to an iMac system is going to be a difference of almost $1,000 to $2,000 and we're going to get a system that's actually better for handling photo and video editing in so many ways. So that's why I go with this instead of an iMac and for most of you, I think you should probably do the same. So now that we have that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the components. So the first thing I selected is going to be the case. And this is an NZXT and this is the uh, H500i. There's also an H700i, which is a little bit bigger. If you want to throw a ton of components in there, maybe you could go with that one. But the 500i is plenty good, has some great cable routing. And you can really go anywhere when it comes to um, a case, as long as it supports a motherboard that you're going to use. So really, I don't care, but this is a great case and they come with a bunch of different colors and I just highly recommend them. Probably the most important thing here is going to be the processor and this is the Intel 9900K. This is a really great i9 processor. It can turbo up to 5 gigahertz. It is going to be an 8 core processor and it is really an amazing thing and if you need to save some money you can go with the i7 but really for 100 200 bucks more the i9 this is just something that is not very easy to upgrade later in fact you probably will never want to upgrade your processor and so I really recommend using the top end that you can get and then also with that uh, keep in mind that Adobe is very processor intensive and so having an i9 with an 8 core is going to be a very good starting point for getting great performance on there so if you need to go with that you can with the i7 but I highly recommend the i9 they do have a 10 core as well but again we're starting to get into a, a little bit less of the benefit and a lot more cost so now that we have that out of the way let's take a look at the motherboard I just drop stuff this is the Z390 uh, designer by Gigabit and 
I went with them because this offers Thunderbolt 3. So it kind of future proofs myself a little bit more. However, if you want to save a little bit more money and you don't need that Thunderbolt 3, um, Asus has a great Z390 motherboard as well. So I'll link to both of these below. But the one that I went with was this. And the main reason for that is being able to have Thunderbolt 3. There are a couple uh, RAID hard drives that use that that would be a big benefit if you need tons of storage and need super fast performance on that one. But until USB 4.0 arrives, this is basically the fastest thing and the main reason that I went with this motherboard instead of some of the other ones on the market. This is also something that you do not want to upgrade later on. So get something good, get something that's gonna last and you'll be very happy for it. Moving on from here, the next best thing is going to be this. This is the RTX 2070 and there is quite a lot of some interesting discussion on these new RTX cards. The main benefit to them is going to be a potential for gaming. We'll have to see if that ray tracing, which is the RTX, is going to be a thing for video editing. It's really unknown right now. However, these are better than the uh, like the 1070s and 1080s from last year or the last generation. So I do recommend these graphics cards are going to be just better performance all around and you're gonna kind of future-proof yourself depending on what the market does. However, they did just introduce a uh, 1660 and that one is going to be the kind of old GTX type card and it's not going to have that ray tracing. However, it's going to be good enough for most purposes. So if you want to save a little bit money on your graphics, you can go with that. However, the 2070 is going to be good. Now, for those of you thinking, hey, I need a 2080 or 2080 Ti, those are great, man. If you have the money, go ahead and do it. However, keep in mind that it, uh, Adobe is just not that great at leveraging graphics cards. It, they've been saying they're gonna get better for years. I haven't seen it. I don't expect it anytime soon. So if you are looking at graphics, this is something you can always upgrade later. It is so easy to upgrade a graphics card. And then right now, Adobe is just not utilizing it all that much. So the 2070 or the GTX 1660 is gonna be a great way to go on graphics cards. Now, like I said, the main reason of getting a PC versus a Mac is gonna be storage. And so here is where we're gonna talk about storage. Now, there are two reasons that I love building a PC for storage. First of all, drives like this are super inexpensive. This is lightning fast. I mean, 3,500 megabits per second, I think are the speeds on this thing. It's an M.2 drive. This is a one terabyte drive and it's like 200 and something dollars. Extremely inexpensive for a lot of storage and this is amazing for your system drive on here. This will give you plenty of room. You could go with a 500 gig if you want to. They do have a two terabyte, so if you got the money, might wanna upgrade on that one. However, again, I don't mind taking that in-between route on storage. Again, they're very easy to upgrade, although your system drives, I don't like upgrading system drives all that much. So if you can for your system drive, go with a little bit more storage than you think you need. And again, for under a hundred bucks less, uh, you can upgrade from a 500 gig to a one terabyte. And this is a great way to go. Super fast storage right now. These Samsung drives are amazing. Now for my working drive, I'm actually using the SanDisk Ultra. This is a two terabyte SSD. They're crazy lightning fast. They can do video editing and 4K multi-track. Two terabytes is enough for basically all of my current projects. If you need a little bit more, they do have a four terabyte or you can get a couple two terabyte systems. And then I'll talk about, actually I have a whole video coming up talking about my workflow on how I edit off of OneDrive and have all of my uh, files stored across multiple computers. So we'll talk about that a little bit here, but if you want, Check out that workflow. I'll link to it whenever I have it, but you can subscribe and then turn on those notifications and you'll get that video as well. But two terabyte SSD, highly recommend it. Again, a couple hundred bucks for this and you can edit your current projects on this. If you wanted to get just a single two terabyte system drive in your iMac, oh man, you're looking at like a thousand dollar upgrade for doing something like that. So. Again, main reason I love these PCs is you can do this. And again, if I need to add more storage later, guess what? It is so easy to do that. Uh, you can do it at any time. This is gonna be a great drive for now, but if I need to upgrade it, I can. But talking about that workflow, I do need to talk about this drive because even though this doesn't go inside my computer, this is such a crucial part about making this system work that I just have to talk about it. Um, I have been using Synology NAS drives for a long time. This is actually their newest 
1019 plus, which is absolutely amazing for photographers and videographers. You get five bay drives. I've got 40 terabytes, four 10 terabyte drives in mine, and I love this thing. So a couple reasons why I do this. Every computer gets backed up to this drive. So all of my laptops, all of my desktops, even my wife's iMac and everything like that gets backed up to this storage device. You can have as many computers as you want going straight to this. Any file, any image, any song, any effect, any video file that I need, I can access it from any computer in the entire world as long as I have internet access. They have a great app on my phone uh, that is able to pull up any picture. I mean, this has just been invaluable for me over the last couple of years. So now they have the 1019 Plus in, I'd highly recommend checking these out. They're about 600 bucks. You buy the storage to put in there, they will last you years. And not only can you run these things um, RAID for protection, so I have mine set. Actually, they have their own version of RAID. I forget what it's called, but it's amazing because you can add hard drives without uh, having to lose storage. So if you have four 10 terabyte drives and I add a six terabyte drive, it's much more efficient at managing that. It makes it so easy to upgrade later on. Just uh, so much I could say about these. I highly recommend them. So. Definitely look at getting yourself one of these. They do have some uh, two day bay models and also a four bay 918 plus, which is what I was using before. But this 1019 is brand new and it's not a lot more. Four or five bays is going to get you tons of storage and they even have expansion if you need it. All right, so now the little things. Um, 32 terabytes, 32 terabytes, that would be nice. 32 gigs of memory. That's what I loaded my system with. I think that's the great in-between point. I haven't found myself needing more than that just yet. And again, this is two, um, I only use two DINs, so this is two cards, 16 gigs a piece. So if I want to, this can actually take 64. So if I want to, I can get another two pack later on and add it, very inexpensive to add later. So I recommend 32, but 16 each. Don't get those in eight. And then if you need to, you can add 16 more later on. Very good way to go. And then uh, cooler, I am using this EVGA. Um, this is a liquid cooler, but it's an all-in-one system. So you don't have to worry about a whole lot of maintenance with that. It's a little bit quieter than just going with a CPU fan. I'm not overclocking my system, but because it's an i9 and just a lot of hot temps when you're rendering out, Definitely get a decent cooler. They actually have some bigger ones for 240 millimeter mounts. Um, this is just the 120. So if you do have it, go ahead and get the bigger one if you have the space for that, and that will be good. But you're definitely gonna want a CPU cooler. And then also, if you see a lot of EVGA products, that's because, man, these guys have the best warranty and tech support. Like, I mean, they're not paying me or anything. I didn't get any of this stuff from them, but holy crap. I mean, I needed to call them and I was able to call them 24 seven. So it was actually a Sunday at like 9 p.m. when I was building this and I was able to give them a call and ask them a question on the cooler and they picked up in like three minutes and asked them. So uh, take that in comparison with like Gigabyte. I called them, uh, you actually can't call them. I had to fill out an account just to get an email to them to ask them a question. So yeah, if you can get EVGA just because their um, tech support is amazing on that. And I really appreciate when a company does that kind of stuff. And I'll talk about you all day long when you do that. Again, my graphics card also from them. And again, just because they have an amazing tech support. So the last thing to talk about is going to be a monitor. Now the sky's the limit when it comes to monitors. You can hook up anything you want. For me, something that's really important is color accuracy for photography and videography. So my main monitor is actually the BenQ 271, SW271. It is a 4K screen and it is really good because it is just an amazing panel. So many professional features on that and you just get amazing color accuracy. Everything is color calibrated straight from the manufacturer and it's a 27 inch display and it is just amazing. Now, if you're looking for something cheaper, here is the SW240. 
And this is a 24 inch version of that. It is a lower resolution, but you're still getting all of those professional features that you can get with the higher end monitors. So again, if something like color accuracy is gonna be very important to you, which it is for me, this is a 10 bit screen. It can display so much stuff. And again, the features on this are amazing. Being able to switch real quick into a black and white mode. Uh, there's just a whole lot of stuff. They have a hotkey puck for being able to switch between different profiles really quickly. You can set things up so easily with a whole bunch of other systems. If you're using multiple graphics card, multiple computers, it's so easy to work with these. Plenty of inputs as well. So I highly recommend these for your monitors if you're looking for some way to go. The uh, BenQ monitors and the SW240 or the SW271 are just amazing pieces of tech. So just like that, we have a crazy awesome editing computer right here, photo and video, lots of very high speed storage for doing 4K stuff for 2,200 bucks for this computer. This is an amazing deal, a great way of doing it. If you do need to, I do have a bill down below for about 1,500 that will get you almost all the way there. And if you have some money to spend, I have a recommended bill just over three grand that will get you basically anything that you could ever dream for in a computer. If you have any questions, I'm gonna be down in the comments below answering all of that. Uh, if you were following me on Instagram, you actually saw a preview to this. So if you're not following me there, go check that out. And I've got the full office tour and everything else with the full new desk setup coming up real soon. So make sure you're subbed for that. Turn on notifications. Appreciate you guys liking and subscribing. And thank you so much. And I'll see you in that new video coming up real soon.